It all started with a threat on 4chan. The bloop was an ultra-low frequency underwater sound recorded by NOAA in 1997. It was unlike any other sounds ever recorded underwater due to its frequency and the fact that it was recorded by other sensors thousands of miles from its estimated source. It is consistent with other marine animal noises due to its rapidly changing frequency, but it would be an animal many times larger than the blue whale, the largest animal to ever exist. The consensus by most scientists is that it was caused by geological activity. What is your view, X? A deep sea diver then comes into the thread. Oh, that's the black carpet, allegedly. A bit of an urban legend amongst deep sea divers. I'm that diver anon if anyone is in the last deep sea thread. I've heard about this thing a couple of times from coworkers and buddies. I don't remember the details of the full story right now, to be honest, but I'll talk to my buddy sometime and see if he remembers and post them on here. But the basic gist that I can remember is that this thing is some sort of colony organism, like a giant moving coral. It's a giant black carpet of macrobiotic cells that crawls over the ocean floor, sifting through nutrients with millions of tiny feelers. No one has ever gotten a good estimate of the size other than it's big, and apparently it makes a noise similar to this bloop thing. One guy apparently saw it swimming or riding the currents as well, so it does more than just crawl on the ocean floor. I suppose you could call it a one-of-a-kind organism, but I'm not sure if that applies to colony organisms like this. Macrobiotic cells, so you're saying the ocean floor is covered by a giant jellyfish? Essentially, yes. According to how the black carpet has been described to me, it shares many similarities to a jellyfish. One story I heard had a diver getting stung by some sort of large feeler strand that apparently hangs off the top, similar to a jellyfish. There was this really old retired diver I talked to who claimed to have seen it. He claimed to have seen an entire decomposing sperm whale being consumed by the carpet. I should really make a post compiling all the stories I've heard about this thing. So I talked to my buddy and I'm going to start writing up some of the stories I've heard about the black carpet. This is the first story I heard of it from some Finnish bloke with a strong accent. He was doing a deep sea dive repairing some sort of cable, I assume it was probably fiber optic. As he told it, initially he thought he was in the wrong spot because he couldn't find the cable anywhere. He starts searching and eventually finds one end, but just the one, sheared clean through. He gets his dive buddy to stay with that end of the line while he goes looking for the other end, swimming in a straight line in the direction of the other line. In his estimation, he swam about half a mile before he found the other end of the line. He stressed to me that the entire half a mile middle section of the line was just completely gone. It was a huge deal and everyone thought it was the Russians, but this guy was sure that this carpet thing had done it. He said he heard the noise it apparently makes, even though he never saw it. The next story is from my buddy. He heard it from a guy who heard it from another guy who heard it from another guy, so take it with a heavy grain of salt. This guy was doing a dive. Depth, location, what he was doing never got specified. Just that he was really deep. He starts hearing this odd noise that gets associated with the carpet a lot. The way he described it was similar to that video of the bloop, ultra low pitch, sort of like a creepy, distorted whale song. As he gets closer, he hears this almost static crackling noise as well. The way he described it was like a million prawns getting cracked open at once, if that makes any difference. As he gets closer to the bottom, the noises are getting louder and louder. At this point, he was thinking that he's hearing some sort of sonar from a submarine and that some jackass submarine crew is playing a joke on him. When the guy gets to the bottom, he shines his light around, trying to find whatever he's looking for. And what he found was that the seafloor had literally come to life and was crawling past him. This is probably the best description of the carpet you're going to get. According to this guy, the carpet is at least a mile long or wide, made mostly of these strange black feelers that apparently make the strange popping noise. Most of the top is covered in various sand, rock, debris with feelers poking through. Also a few long transparent stalks as he described them that float upwards. Apparently some of these were like 20 feet long. According to the guy it was singing, which doesn't make any fucking sense to me, but whatever. Guy swam back up to the surface and claimed he had an equipment malfunction. Came back down a couple hours later and got there just in time to see the last of the thing disappear. Apparently it stretched as far as the eye could see, which isn't that far at the bottom of the ocean, but still. This one is an old urban legend that's been floating around the diving community for years. Never heard a concrete source of it, so in my opinion, it probably never happened. 
especially since it involves a submarine crew, so I'm not sure how a diver would have heard about it, since, as far as I know, submarine crews usually stay inside their ship. Anyway, here goes. Submarine is doing something, either war games or patrolling for Chinese, Russian, North Korean, bad guy submarines. The story isn't terribly consistent about this, I hear it different every single time. For whatever reason, they're not using an active sonar because they want to avoid detection, floating dead somewhere a couple hundred meters off the sea floor. They're just sitting there, chilling and listening with their sensors, trying to detect enemy submarines or whatever. When they start hearing the noise, their sensors can't make any sense of it and it's getting louder at an alarming rate. Starts out as something only the sensors can hear. But before long, the entire crew is hearing this strange, distorted humming or singing that people always associate with the carpet. Captain thinks that the only explanation is that it's some sort of new sonar or jamming technology, and he orders the sonar crew to send out a ping to locate the source of the noise. This is the part of the story that always stays the most consistent, I assume because it's the most memorable. The sonar operator shouts out, New sonar contact, bearing... Sir, what's our depth? The captain replies, 500 meters, or whatever depth the submarine is supposed to be at. The sonar operator replies, but sir, the sonar says the seafloor is 10 meters below us. The captain says that's nonsense, then walks over to the sonar station. Checks the readings, then walks over the helmsman and checks the depth. Checks the nautical charts for where they are. Somehow, apparently, the ocean has gotten about 200 meters shallower. The captain orders another ping from the sonar to try and locate the source of the noise. Sonar operator speaks up again concerned, Sir, the ocean is getting deeper again. Captain asks him to repeat himself. Ocean floor is once again at expected depth, sir. Captain takes a look for himself and sure enough, they are no longer 10 meters above the ocean floor. There's also a very, very large dot on the screen behind the submarine. Captain asks what the large contact is, sonar operator. Equipment malfunction, sir. Captain pings again, just out of curiosity. This equipment malfunction has maintained its shape and is continuing to move away from the submarine, and apparently taking the strange noise with it. Again, this is basically an old wives' tale amongst deep sea divers, so take it with a grain of salt. It's possible that a submarine detected the carpet or whatever on sonar, and that's the origin of the story. But I highly doubt this actually happened. Still makes for a cool story, though. Last story for now. I'll see if I can dig up some more later. This is from the old guy I talked about earlier. Nice guy. Marine biologist who has done both deep sea welds and nature and research studies with ROVs. Apparently the carpet ate one of his ROVs on an expedition. According to him, it happened late one night when the rest of the crew was sleeping. He was pulling an all-nighter, studying the sea life around volcanic vents. He's moving the ROV from one vent area to the next when he sees what he described as churning sediments on the sea floor. A giant moving cloud of underwater dust essentially moving towards the ROV. He moves in closer and sees what he describes as a colossal echnoderm crawling along the sea floor, with long dextrous filaments probing the sea floor ahead of it. He maneuvers the ROV in for a closer look and he uses the arm to prod one of the filaments. In the blink of an eye, he lost contact with the ROV. Apparently it happened so fast he didn't even see it happen. One second, the thing was about five meters away from the vehicle. The next second, it had swallowed the thing whole. His excuse for not having footage was that the footage was all recorded and stored on the ROV, rather than being recorded on the operating station, which seems fishy to me. He was, however, very confident in himself, to the extent he claims he is the discoverer of this new species. He even gave it a name, which I completely forgot because it was so stupid and boring. Giant sea carpet sounds cooler anyway. If it's similar to a jellyfish and is actually a colony of microorganisms, then it may be related to the Portuguese man of war. The way I've heard it described, it shares more similarities with a starfish or a sea anemone than a jellyfish. The marine biologist guy who said he'd seen it had some interesting thoughts on what it was. His idea is that it's some sort of holdover, or descendant from the very first invertebrate forms of life on Earth. He did a whole long talk about how coral is one of the oldest forms of life on the planet, and the reason why the ocean is the only place teeming with large invertebrate creatures is because that's where all life first evolved. In his mind, jellyfish and other sea invertebrates probably evolved from this thing rather than vice versa. This giant sea carpet or whatever would have been one of those very first life forms to ever exist on Earth, technically making it one of our ancient ancestors. It's a pretty cool theory, all things considered. 
In between stories, another Anon posts an excerpt from a book he's read, which seems to detail an encounter with the black carpet all the way back in the 1970s. The excerpt goes as follows. I used to have a friend who was at one time an undersea builder for Gulf Oil in the 70s, and did work on oil rigs way out in the Gulf of Mexico. He gave it up because he was seeing things that were beyond his ability to comprehend and even describe, and he wasn't the only one. At one oil rig, the welding crew were getting used to seeing this giant headless glowing living fire hose that would zoom in from out of nowhere at incredible NASCAR speeds, and would keep on zooming past the welders for up to 15 minutes. My friend then said he finally saw what ate the giant headless glowing living fire hoses one scary day and caught the first helicopter back to shore. It was too big and too close to him. It was as big to him as you are to an ant. As a matter of fact, he had to ascend PDQ because he was in fear of being crushed like a bug. But the predator had a pallor and skin texture like a sea anemone and it might have been built along the lines of a starfish or a freshwater pond hydra, i.e. with multiple arms or tentacles, and it was eating the fire hose entity by swallowing it. Its method of propulsion was a mystery. In a non a video of siphonophore footage, the diver Anon replies, the one at 409 looks almost exactly like a very small version of what I've heard the black carpet is described as. I'm going to try and get in contact with the old biologist guy who saw the carpet and ask him some more questions. The thread continues. Way, way back in the mid-1980s, I read in a book on cryptids that there was something called the Hyde. Apparently it was a flattish thing with eyes along the rim, about the size of a large cowhide, hence the name. From what I recall, the one observation was of such a creature rising up out of an underwater trench to absorb a shark who'd somehow become paralyzed by it. It was observed at some distance by a diver. Does any of that ring a bell to anyone? Supposedly this took place somewhere off the Pacific coast of South America. I've heard some people who claim to have seen that thing, or similar things. A lot of stuff I've heard from other divers seems like they could be attributed to very rare or large siphonophores that live in the deep sea. What you're talking about was described to me as a sort of pancake-shaped creature that would hide under the sand, with a single, small, near-transparent tentacle floating upwards. A diver touched it, spasmed, and immediately the creature rose out of the sand to devour him. Don't touch strange shit in the ocean, people. May as well go on a tangent and talk about some other stories I've heard that might be attributed to siphonophores. There's this one cranky old retired diver who swore he'd seen a sea monster of unfathomable size on a dive once. I always assumed he was full of shit, but the way he describes it sounds a lot like a siphonophore. The story went something like this. He was on a dive doing something that I've forgotten when he sees an absolutely giant tentacle stretching up from the nearby drop-off. The thing was so huge he couldn't see no beginning nor end to it, and so now he goes around constantly claiming to have come within a hair breadth of devourment by a gargantuan sea leviathan of unfathomable proportion. And yes, that is exactly how he talked. Looking into these siphonophores, it makes total sense that something like this could exist, though it would be less of a sea monster than a giant serpentine jelly blob sifting through plankton and floating nutrients. Another siphonophore-related story I've heard is one about an absolutely gargantuan jellyfish-type creature that was allegedly about the size of a military submarine. The diver who saw it said the thing was so massive that it somehow developed its own biosphere with various species of fish circling around it and swimming inside of it. He described it as having an appearance like a giant upside-down orchid suspended underneath a massive sphere of translucent jelly. The coloration was very dull, but that might have just been due to the extreme depth. The Diver Anon returns. So, I finally got a hold of the old biologist guy on the phone, and I talked to him about the sea carpet again. According to him, it is not a siphonophore. He qualified that by saying that siphonophores are not fast or mobile. They survive by basically floating around, expending very little energy, and occasionally snagging a meal with the neurotoxin stinger tentacles. He talked for a while about what makes the carpet seemingly a biological impossibility. According to him, something of that size wouldn't get enough food or energy to survive and keep up at its level of activity just from scavenging sediments on the seabed. Siphonophores can get really, really huge because they sort of sit around and let food come to them without any energy expenditure. So the profile of the carpet fits more with an active predator or scavenger than a passive one. 
I mentioned to him that I'd heard stories about decomposing corpses of whales being seen by some people being digested by the carpet, and he got really excited about that. His working theory is that the carpet is an entirely unknown form of life, in the sense that it is a colony organism similar to a siphonophore, but the individual cells are much more complex and capable than those of a siphonophore. Keep in mind, this is purely theoretical stuff he's pulling out of his ass to try and explain why something that should be physically or biologically impossible might exist. He studies siphonophores quite extensively, and one thing that remains a mystery is how the cells communicate, considering they have no central nervous system or brain to speak of. They're basically just big bacteria. The key, apparently, is high-frequency vibrations. He hasn't been able to prove it yet, because it's damn hard to get your hands on a siphonophore to study. But he thinks the individual cells vibrate to communicate with one another and pass a message along the entire organism. His theory is that the carpet is basically the siphonophore equivalent of a Russian nesting doll. Rather than being a colony of individual cells, it is a colony of individual multicellular siphonophores, and is therefore the missing link between single-celled life and complex multicellular life. The bloop noise, which the carpet apparently makes, is actually millions of these creatures communicating in their own primitive language. Since siphonophores can reproduce asexually, he envisions the carpet as constantly evolving in size and shape, depending on the environment and the amount of food it can consume. So perhaps after consuming the carcass of a very large creature like a whale or a giant squid, it would be extremely large and have a large amount of cells, but would eventually shrink as itself consumed unneeded cells. The multicellular structure of the carpet serves a twofold purpose, both serving as a distraction from potential predators, similar to a lizard losing its tail while running away, and as a long-term storage of nutrients. Since big meals are few and far between at the bottom of the ocean, the carpet stores the energy it consumes by creating more cells and growing larger, which it will consume between meals whenever it needs energy. Not just that, but he's very convinced that the very first forms of life on Earth evolved in the deep ocean near volcanic events, making the carpet the oldest existing form of life on the planet by far. He talked my ear off for a while, but I don't have much more interesting to tell you guys other than this for now. Though I feel that even though this is X and people came here to hear about supernatural or weird stories and shit, this is just the hypothesis of one guy who apparently saw the carpet once. It's by no means the definitive truth and this guy has never actually been able to perform a real scientific study on it. He just saw it once and is drawing conclusions from what little knowledge he has. Thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like and a comment for the algorithm. I hope you have a spooky night.